Today I'm going to talk about Kodak Cresta cameras. These were 120 very basic cameras that took 120 film and were introduced between about 1955 and 1963. In the 50s, the most popular Kodak was probably the Brownie 127. 127 film had been introduced, I think, as early as the 30s and was a small film and I think it's approximately four by four. Um, and you can see the smaller spools here. And this was a very popular camera for a lot of people. It was their first camera, beautifully designed, Baker light. However, the photographs would have to be enlarged. The imprint size, you could get imprints and people did, but they were very small. Internationally, Kodak was very keen to push 127 film and 620 film. However, in Britain, the Kodak works at Hendon seemed to have some interest in still producing a 120 camera. And the first one in the 50s that they produced, which if you look between the this Brownie and the Cresta, they are extremely similar cameras was the Cresta 1 and here we have a Bakelite body we have this mechanism here which one ray gives us a yellow a close-up filter um, sorry a close-up lens so if we want to be four to seven feet we use this so it's ideal for portraits and the other ray gives us a yellow filter. Colour film was expensive. I remember someone telling me, think about it as a pint of beer. A black and white shot would be one pint of beer. A colour shot would be two pints of beer. Film was expensive. Um, and black and white was still very popular. And a yellow filter is great for getting the clouds out. So on this model, the Cresta, is isn't labelled the Creston 1, but it's known as the Creston 1 because obviously more came after. Simply open here. From my memory, it slides. There we are. Okay, so it's a interesting shutter mechanism here. This is all one this unit, which you can actually take out and lubricate if it's become unworkable but there we have the camera it's a fixed lens one of the tiny issues is because it's bacon light they can easily chip so i mean i did have a film in here and i didn't have a problem with light leaking through but looking at it i'm amazed i didn't have a problem with light leaking through so if you're buying one they aren't expensive, you can pick them up to five to ten pounds. But if you want to use it and with 120 film, which is easily accessible, um, you know, check for trips. The model that came after the Cresta 1 was, of course, a Cresta 2. And here I have a Cresta 2 that is in its box. It's a, at first sight, it's a very similar camera. It's got the one, it's got the filter and the close-up lens. The big difference is on the side. This model, the Crested 2, will take a flash. And this is a brownie flash that would fit to some of the box cameras as well. And you can see this flash fits on like so. Take a battery and a flash bulb and how cutting 20th century is that. So that's the Cresta 2. By the late 50s, Kodak was trying to be a little bit more modern and it had a great British designer called Kenneth Grange who came up with the 44 Brownie. Um, 
And at the same time as they bought out the 44 Brownie, which is a 127, they did a modification on the Crestor and they produced the Crestor 3. And here we have a Crestor 3. As you can see, compared to the earlier model, it looks very modern with its grey top. However, when you take it apart and just slide the bottom off, what you actually get is a camera which is incredibly similar to the Cresta. The only difference is this plastic moulding at the top, which gives it a very contemporary look. If you look at the Browning 44A, it's actually a, quite a different construction. The Cresta 3 has far more connection with the previous Crestas than the 44. Now this one, instead of the yellow filter, we now have a reduced aperture stop. This is F of all things F13, but on the other side we still have the auxiliary lens um, which is four to seven feet. Okay. Now I noticed that this camera in my 1960, where am I? In my 1960 edition, I have got the Cresta 2. And in my 1962 to 1963 edition of the Blue Book, I've got the Cresta 3. And the ground cost of the Cresta 3 was two pounds, two shillings and five pence. Interestingly, this camera doesn't appear in the next blue book. And we then go on to the whole period of Instamatic cameras. At this time, Kodak did a big questionnaire and um, investigation into what stopped people buying cameras. And the biggest problem with cameras um, according to the chemists who um, did most of the processing was that people found the roll film difficult to put in the cameras. People found loading cameras a problem and it was a problem that sometimes put them off buying film. So Kodak came up with the Instamatic. That is another story. Going back to the Cresta, as it's a fixed lens, you aren't going to get the best possible images. However, you are going to get some interesting images. I have used these and have popped some images on the end of this video. It's a fun camera. It's a bit of an iconic design. It's a nice design. It's an interesting bit of manufacturing. It's a good piece of history. And if you find one with the boxes, the boxes are always kind of pretty as well. They're not going to cost you a fortune, they're not going to make you a fortune, but for a bit of fun, the Cresta, I think, is an interesting camera.